Welcome to Retrieving Data from Words for Finance 372. Words stands for Wharton Research Data Services, and it acts as a hub that lets us access all of the data subscriptions that the university has. So all of the individual data providers giving stock return data, accounting data, bond data, international data, they all provide data through the Words interface. In this video, I'll show you how to log into Words, query a few data sets, and download the data in a format we can use. So this is the Words homepage. I'll provide the link in the description below. When you get here, you'll need to log in using the class login username and password. That takes us to the Words homepage, which you see right here. You can see all of the subscriptions we have here at University of Texas, which is a lot. I'm not going to go through each of these one by one. I'll go through a couple of examples in a second, but before we do that, the first place you can go if you're trying to find a specific type of data is up here under Get Data, and then click on this Concepts word here. So within Concepts here, it will give you a ordering of these different data sets. So if you wanted to learn about financial statements, the first thing is CompuStat, that's what we're going to use, but there's also FactSet Fundamentals and all these other ones that give you different information from around the world. Here's audit and regulatory findings, some stuff about banks, industry or segments data, executive compensation, intellectual property, stock prices, analyst forecast estimates, intraday returns and quotes, indices factors, bonds, mutual funds, derivatives, REITs, currency exchange rates, and ownership, M&A, ESG, economics, marketing, news, healthcare, Usually they're listing the most commonly used data source first. So option metrics for options, crisp mutual funds for mutual funds, crisp for stock prices, and CompuStat for financial statements. Okay, so let's start by downloading some stock data. I'm gonna show you how to get the monthly returns data set for all individual stocks that we use in the homework and for the quant platform. So you get that by going down here to stock prices, clicking on crisp, CRISP stands for the Center for Research and Security Prices, and it maintains the most comprehensive collection on words of all of the different stock prices. You can see here that for each data provider, in this case CRISP, there's still a lot of different data sets provided by that data provider. Okay, this annual update versus quarterly update, this is just how often we get updates of these data sets. The things that are grayed out, we do not have access to at McCombs. The ones that are in blue, we do have access to. So let's have a look at the first one here, which is the stock securities files. So this is going to be our most basic security level stock price data. There's a lot of other things in here you can get into as well. Indices, treasuries, um, and assignments into different portfolios. But let's start with security files here. Okay, and then now we can say, do we want daily stock prices and returns or monthly stock prices and returns? Here we're going to look at monthly stock returns. If you were doing a strategy where you wanted daily stock returns, then you'd go off down this path here. Okay, so we click on monthly stock file, and this brings up the query form, which lets us pick what kind of data we want to download. Okay, we can choose our date range here. This is monthly, so we can choose whatever month we want. Let's go back to 1963, the first month and towards the end of 2020. The step two, you can ask to get a specific set of firms, not the full data set. And the way you would do that is you would say, you'd enter the tickers here. Let's say you only wanted SPY, you could put more in here. I could put an MSFT and Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, if you have perm nodes, which is um, a different firm identifier, perm code, QSIP, any of these other identifiers, you could put them here as well. We can also upload a file containing all of the firm identifiers. We can create a list and save it into our uh, profile here, or we can just search the entire database, which says, give me everything. And you could choose your company code here anyway, just so you make sure you get perm node data that comes out of our query. All right, now down here, these are the variables we want to get. So we're asking for monthly data from this time period. We want to get all of the identifiers. And now we can query which columns or which variables we want to get back. All right, so there's a lot, there, in this case, this data set, there's 62 different variables we can ask for, but we break it, can break it down by identifying information. Um, all we want is just the perm node that we already have here. But if you want more, you can get more. You can get an industry indicator. You can get a trading status, whether it's active or not at the time. 
You can get the SAC codes or different industry classifiers, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let's just leave this as is for now. Then time series information, this is the monthly data on prices and returns. Okay, so we get prices, price alternate. Notice here you can ask for help here about what does price alternate mean? Well, price alternate is the alternate monthly price derived from daily prices. It contains the last non-missing price in the month, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so in this case, let's just get, we want the regular price and the holding period return. Holding period returns include dividends, which is what we want. Um, and then we also maybe want the holding period return without dividends. All right, it also gives us some more information here about the number of shares outstanding. Let's grab that. Um, and then let's get some delisting information. If we want that, we can figure out like, you know, is the stock being delisted this period, et cetera. Distribution information is here so we can figure out more about dividends, you know, distribution code. It tells you something about what kind of distribution is, whether it's a dividend or a liquidating dividend or subscription rights or whatever. Um, we're not gonna use any of this for now, but you can, you can grab it if you want it. The NASDAQ provides these extra identifiers, et cetera. This is probably good for now. Let's just download it with these things. We can get lots more here, as you can see. Okay, so conditional statements, this is a way of filtering the data a little bit so we don't just get every single observation from this time period. If we go back to here, one important thing that CRISP gives us is this thing called a share code. So what is a share code? It's a two-digit code describing the type of shares traded because this CRISP data set contains not just ordinary stocks, but also lots of other things like these things called ADRs, SBRs, um, units, and there's like ETFs in here. There's a lot of stuff in here. But we really only want the first digit to be ordinary common shares. We don't want any of this other stuff. And we want, let's say, U.S. securities. So that's going to be the second digit will be either zero or one. Okay, so to get this, we want to make sure our share code is either 10 or 11, because 10 is, we want the first digit to be one and the second digit to be either zero or one. So to do that, we can use one of these conditional statements where we ask it to only give us data where the share code is between 10 and 11. All right, so to do that, we need to filter or do a conditional statement on any variable we have in our query. So let's query now share code. And then we want to say share code, let's say it's, we need it to be greater than or equal to 10. We can add another rule that says share code less than or equal to 11. Okay, and this can be an and or an or. In this case, we want it to be an and. We want it to be both. All right, and now the last thing we need to do is choose how we want this output. Let's say we wanted a CSV file. Date format, let's leave that as is. And then we can submit the query. You can see when the query goes through, it's going to give you the status, and it's going to sort of take a while here. It's going to be running for a while. Okay, that took about a minute. It's already done now. The output files are here. We can click this to download, and here it goes downloading. Enough about stock returns, though. Now let's see how we get accounting data, because that's going to be the other source of data we use for our example backtest of the book-to-market strategy. All right, to get data here, let's go back to concepts here, and we can go to, for example, company financials, because that's what we're looking for, and go into S&P CompuStat. CompuStat, like we saw with CRISP, has lots of different data sets within here. There's Capital IQ, which is actually pretty different than CompuStat. Um, let's go with CompuStat, though. We want North American data, so we click on that. Um, and then within here, we have fundamentals quarterly and fundamentals annually. But let's go to fundamentals, and we'll do fundamentals quarterly, because that book-to-market strategy I'm using as an example is using quarterly financial data. So we go in here, and you see something pretty similar to what we saw with CRISP, where you first choose a time frame here. Now, because this is accounting data, you can think about time as either the date of the end of the fiscal quarter or the actual fiscal year. Sometimes companies will have, you know, the Q4 end in January of the next year, for example, in which case the fiscal year and the data date would be different. So data date is the last day of the fiscal period, in this case, the fiscal quarter. All right, so for our example here, we want to start again in 1963, and we can just go all the way through the end of the data set. We're going to use as identifiers GV keys, and we'll search the entire data set. Okay, next, CompuStat gives you these screening variables. These are sort of like the conditional statements we saw before, but they're free set up for you. All right, the first is the consolidation level. You can click here to read more about this. Um, we'll just stick with the standard one, which is C. 
Uh, industry format, it's fine either way. We want to kick, stick with the standard format. Population source here, D is for domestic. We want that. Um, quarter type, fiscal view is fine. Currency, let's just stick with US dollars. And we do want to include both active and inactive companies here. So inactive means a company that's gone out of business, but we still want them in our data set because we're thinking about a back test here. Right now, it's outputting all these variables, but we don't really care because those are going to be all the same for all of these things. Um, so let's not bother ourselves with outputting that. All right, in terms of variable types, we just want to put here the data items is fine. We don't need the footnotes or the data. Here, for this CompuStat accounting data, there's just so much more. There's 674 variables here, most of which are uh, these quarterly data items or the year-to-date data, data items. All right, so let's start, though, with the identifying information. We definitely just want the GV key. That's fine. I don't think we need anything else here. We don't need company descriptors. Quarterly data items, this is where the business is. You can see there's 362 of these things. It's kind of hard to just scroll through them. They all have these like two, these two names, the, like the code and then the description. Sometimes it's easier to actually go back to search all, where now we can actually do a search. So what we're looking for here, remember, is the book to market ratio. So for that, we need to get something about the book value of equity. You just type book, it's not gonna give you anything because all of these things are book values. I mean, the default is the book value. This is an accounting statement. So what we want is something with equity. And you can see that the first thing that comes up is sounds about right, which is the common or ordinary equity. All right, so let's just grab this one. If we want to get a, an alternative, we can get this shareholder's equity, which may be slightly different. You can read about how they're different um, in the documentation. So that's the numerator book value. We still need the denominator, which is market value. So we can use the Chris numbers we already downloaded. Or if we want to get something contemporary where the book value and the market value are at the same time, which is kind of nice, we can grab that from here, which is the sort of end of fiscal period market values. Okay, so how do you get that? Well, there's price. This is the price at the close of the quarter. Um, that seems fine. Okay, and then we can also grab shares outstanding. Type in shares outstanding, and then we have C show Q, common shares outstanding at the end of the quarter. And those are our variables. And you can see, of course, depending on what you're doing, there could be tons of other variables you want. You may want year to date, you may want quarterly, um, whatever it is, it's here. I should warn you that a lot of these quarterly data items, there's 360 of them, but a lot of them are just mostly empty because firms don't always report these things, right? So financial division notes payable, that may be only available in 5% of observations because it's just usually not something that firms uh, need to report or is relevant for them to report. Okay, but something like these variables, which are very common, we should compute them for any firm, they're available for the vast majority of observations in here. Okay, well, you don't need any more conditional statements for this example. And let's do, for, as our output, let's do a Stata v14 file. I've mentioned in other videos about how these DTA files are nice in the terms of retaining variable types. So when we load the DTA file, it's going to know each column's data type already. And we're not going to have to reset that for the dates, for example. All right, so let's do that. Okay, we submit query again, and we wait a few minutes, and we're able to download it. Okay, if, you, if you're doing a query and you don't want to wait on this page or you're worried about losing this page, you can add to the bottom an email address, and it will email you when the query is done. Okay, and then it'll also give you a link that lasts for 24 hours where you can then download the data from there. All right, so that just gives you a taste of how to use this tool, Words. I suggest you log in right away and just start playing around with here all the different stuff you can find here. You may find inspiration for your final project from all the different um, data sets that are available. And just get used to using the interface. And you can look at some of the classroom stuff and sort of look at getting started. And you know, if you want to think about balance sheets or beta visualization, there's lots of cool stuff on here that you can explore and learn from.